everyone and welcome back into another edition of the Five Star News. I'm Kayla Cumby and we have a lot of stories to cover today so sit back relax and let's get you right into the show and we always start our show off with our announcement portion. We have What's Up Heritage with Cole Denton and Daniel Fleming. Take it away guys. Hello generals welcome back to What's Up Heritage a full minute of important news that will get you through your day. While we are on a hybrid schedule there will be tutoring sessions held on Wednesdays from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. Bus, bus transportation is available and free meals will be served. The PSAT is today on January 26 for students who signed up to take it. Bring a number two pencil and a basic four function calculator. And a quick reminder for those of you who missed last week's show. You should go and check out the General Journal. Want to hear some cool stories told by your fellow students? Go to hhsgeneraljournal.com Trust me, it's worth it. Now on to our weather. Today, it should be partly cloudy with a high of 66 and a low of 45. On Wednesday, it should be a 50% chance of rain with a high of 57 and a low of 30. Thursday should be partly cloudy with a high of 45 and a low of 27. Friday should be sunny with a high of 54 and a low of 30. Saturday should be a 40% chance of rain with a high of 54 and a low of 46. Now on to our next segment. Thanks for that, Cole. You always know how to keep me up to date on all things heritage. Moving on now, and as you all probably know, our superintendent posted last week that we will stay in our hybrid cohort A, cohort B schedule all throughout February. This year sure has been crazy, so we had five-star news reporters Jamie Harvey and Lindsay Davies go out and ask students and staff here at Heritage how they feel about our hybrid schedule. All right, generals, uh, the superintendent has decided that we will stay on the hybrid schedule through the end of February, at least. Um, I think uh, we've made it work so far, so hopefully we'll continue to make this work. Uh, this does cut down on quarantines since we have more space uh, to spread out at school. So um, as long as you guys are working on your off days when you're not here at school, that you're, you're not actually off, you're just learning at home, if you're checking Google Classroom and participating um, in any Google Meets that you have and, and getting your work done, then we should be able to continue this until um, we're able to all be back together. So each month, the superintendent will reassess based on the number of cases. Um, at, and at some point, uh, we'll go back to at least four days a week, and then hopefully we'll get to five days a week before the school year is over. Um, uh, I like doing the hybrid schedule because... We don't have to come every day of the week, so I don't have to get up early. And online is a little hard, but it's fine if you just do the work. <laughs> Hybrid schedule is not necessarily the ideal schedule, but um, I'd rather see kid, uh, kids in class a couple days a week than not to see them at all. Um, we're making the best out of the situation that we're in right now and just trying to keep everyone healthy as possible so we can continue to go to school. Thank you for that story. I'm just glad I get to come to school my senior year. Moving on now, and as we all know from our previous stories, Skills USA is on a roll this year. We had Maisie Johnson and Emma Bradford take their tests and qualify for state. I know I would be so excited, so let's see how they feel. Hi, I'm Maisie Johnson, and I competed in the host of Skills USA state exam past week, and I competed in the human growth and development category, and I made it to state and as well as Emma Bradford and Eric McWilliams and they competed in the forensics category and we're going to go to state in Atlanta in March and we're going to compete there so hopefully we do good and we can make it to nationals. So last week our health occupation students competed um, to go to state uh, for HOSA and we had uh, three students who actually won the regional competition uh, Maisie Johnson won in Human Growth and Development, Emma Bradford and Erin McWilliams won in a joint um, uh, class forensic science. Uh, shout out to Hunter Johnston, thank you for helping those girls. Uh, so now they will go on in March to compete for the uh, state top positions. Thanks for that story, but it is time for a break on the show. Don't go anywhere because next in sports, we'll have our boys basketball recap with that huge rival win at Ringgold this past Saturday. We'll also have our girls recap as well and our second blocks segments for sports. 
Don't go anywhere, sports is next. Man, I can't play with these boots on. Oh man, somebody forgot their boots. What in tarnation? Where'd my boots go? Well, have you checked the lost and found? Hmm, that's a good idea. Hey, man. There's my dad gum boots. Welcome into sports everyone. I'm Dylan Bryan and we have a lot to get to on this Tuesday. Starting off, our boys and girls basketball team hosted Southeast Whitfield here last Friday night before going on the road to tangle with the Tigers at Ringgold. How'd it go? Ryan Heat and Hayden Johnson had the recap. Take it away, guys. All right, so we had a big region matchup Friday night against Southeast. It was our second time playing them. Uh, we had a 20-point win the first time we played them. The second time was a 20-point win also. We all played good. We moved the ball well. Um, I thought we were turning it on towards the end of the season. We got a big region tournament coming up. So that big region win helped us a lot. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, Picked up another region win. Um, really, when you play teams in our region who are in the bottom half, we just go out really focused on ourselves, um, try to improve our team chemistry, um, and uh, ended up with a 20-point 20, 20 victory. And then Saturday night, we went across the town to face our rivals, Ringgold. It was a good game. It was, like, it was a hard game. There was a lot of people there. Uh, we usually don't play good in that gym, but it was really fun. Um, I thought Carson Palmer had a good night. Kate Canari really stepped up, and we just battled out the win. Yeah, very close game. Struggled most of the game to score. Um, it's so weird because, you know, going into the game, Ringo had won one game, but we knew that um, it would be a lot tougher than, uh, than everybody expected just because it's a rivalry game and you're playing over there. It's tough to win. Um, but um, started putting the ball in the hole a little bit toward the end of the third quarter and just uh, built, a built on that going into the fourth. Scored 21 points, outscored them by 13 in that quarter and ended up uh, pulling out a victory. But anyways, tonight we have a game against Northwest and it's going to be a big region matchup. We already played them once this year. We played well. We shot the ball well. Uh, we won by about 15 that game. So tonight, hopefully we pull out the win and play good. Well, my thoughts are I hate going over there and it's a uh, it's a miserable place to play, but that's because it's difficult and, and they're good and they pressure you and um, you just have to be really mature, uh, take care of the basketball, and um, they make it hard on you. A very good team, very active, they shoot it well, so we'll have our hands full. Uh, home game Friday night against Southeast, uh, region game. Uh, re their return trip here, girls played really well. Um, Played hard, uh, really balanced scoring offensively, good defensive performance. We told them beforehand uh, needed to get a good defensive performance all four quarters instead of three out of the four like last time we played them. So uh, they responded. We gave up 21. So good performance there. Good win for us in the region play moving forward into trying to get that seed for the region tournament. And, then, of course, um, turning around Saturday and, and traveling to Ringgold where – uh, obviously, a big trip for me to go back home where I was, you know, spent 18 years. So it's uh, always good to go back and, and kind of see the people I haven't spoken to in a while. And I was a little bit 
um, nervous about how the reception would be, but it went really well and um, caught up with a lot of people that I hadn't seen in a while. So um, good reception there. Just didn't came came up a little bit short in the game. Wish we'd have got the win, but uh, they're a really good program. Coach Stockberger does a great job over there. So we're trying to. That was a good gauge for us to see where we are now and where we need to be. Um, they're a pretty physical basketball team, so I, f- I felt like we got we were affected a little bit by their physicality. Um, you know, wish we could have played a little bit better. Um, probably got going a little slow there early on, and that cost us. Dug ourselves a little bit of a nine-point hole, and then couldn't dig our way back out. So second half was way better. Um, did some good things, but obviously some things we could teach on and 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 improve on next time we play them. Um, so we'll we'll tweak a few things and, and kind of um, get back to work today and preparation for Central Carrollton Friday and of course next week. Uh, get to see how much we've improved uh, against Ringgold as they come over here. Congrats on the big win versus Ringgold guys. I know y'all had it the whole time. Now sticking on the basketball beat there's a new segment called HHS Fantasy Showdown. Contestants pick between three pools of names of Heritage boys and girls basketball players. The one with the most points at the end wins it all. Let's see how the first segment goes. I'm Cameron Boatwright and this is the HHS Fantasy Showdown. This semester we'll be matching up students, teachers, and administrators from across the school in a one-on-one fantasy face-off. All right, we're here for our first episode of HHS Fantasy Showdown with our first contestant, Aaron Hilliard. And in Tier 1, our uh, players are Cooper Terry, Dayana Perriman, Brooke Matherly, and Will Allen. Who you got? I think we're going to have to go with big uh, Cooper Terry. All right. And in Tier 2, we have Mitchell Kennedy, Gracie Murray, Carson Palmer, and Ansley Bice. I'm going to have to go on the girl side and pick old Gracie Murray over here. Yes, sir. And in Tier 3, we have Caden Snyder. Courtney McKenzie, Lauren Mock, and Smoke Burns. Yeah, you know, Smoke Burns is looking pretty nice, but I think I'm going to go with old Mocky. All right, and our second contestant is Caden Stover, and he'll be picking in Tier 1. Our players are, once again, Cooper Terry, Dayana Perriman, Brooke Matherly, and Will Allen. Um, I'm going to have to go with Dayana Perriman. All right, and in Tier 2, we have Mitchell Kennedy, Gracie Murray, Carson Palmer, and Ansley Bice. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Mr. Carson Rimlap. <laughs> and in Tier 3, we have Caden Snyder, Courtney McKenzie, Lauren Mock, and Smoke Burns. Smoke is looking pretty good, just like Aaron said, but I think I'm going to have to go with Caden. Oh, good pick. After getting the points totals from the Southeast and Ringgold games this week, it appears Kane is lost. Sad boy. How does it feel to be the first loser? Um, It doesn't feel too good, but... I'll come back. It, it was close, 45 points. You did good. All right, we're here with our winner, Aaron Hilliard. How's it feel? Feels great to beat old Stove Daddy back there, you know, because honestly sucks. So it's amazing, actually. With a grand total of 52 points, I say you did pretty good. Come back for next week for more. I kind of like that one. How do I get on the action? Anyways, our wrestlers went down to Atlanta this past weekend, and we're looking for three wins to advance to the final four of the state playoffs. They took down Maris, but how'd the rest of the competition go? Jacob Hawkins and Tanner Eady have more on the story. Well, the wrestling team qualified for state duels. This year, they GHSA changed the tournament up a little bit so that it actually ran over two weekends. There was a preliminary round and then the, fi- the final eight round the next weekend, and we qualified to go to the preliminaries. Uh, we wrestled, we uh, wrestled well. We had Maris first round, and the, the guys really stepped up, uh, got hyped up and go against Maris. And we started at weight class 132, and uh, Maris didn't score a point on us until we got up to 182. So uh, that we just wrestled really well and uh, ended up beating Maris. Uh, we also, then we had to go on from there, advance to the Sweet 16 round and we wrestled against Flowery Branch. Flowery Branch uh, was more mature physically than we were. We have a a young team. The majority of our uh, wrestlers were ninth and 10th graders. So uh, they they did really well. And, uh, but anyway, the physical strength from Flowery Branch was uh, just a little bit too much for us. 
So we ended up uh, losing to them. But we did have three wrestlers that went undefeated. We had Tate Thomas, Cayman Huey, and Braden Oliver all went undefeated. Uh, so I'm proud of these guys finishing in the in the uh, Sweet 16. And from looking at the bracket, the people that advanced, the teams that advanced to the Elite Eight, I feel like that we were in the top 12 teams in the in the state. So uh, proud of them. Hey guys, um, so this past weekend we had wrestling. We really came out and just obliterated Marist <laughs> totally as a team, which I truly loved because I'm not fond of Marist at all. We then advanced to wrestle. Um, Flattery Branch, and we didn't fare so well. I think we got a little cocky, and uh, we were a little hot-headed, and we should have uh, been more down to earth and thought more, and not rushed things. But uh, we ended up losing that one, so we were eliminated from the state. We had senior night today here against Murray, and um, we should have a pretty good match. Congrats on a great season, guys. And as many of you know, last weekend was the NFC and AFC championship games for the NFL. Carson Green and Damon Jones went around the school to see everyone's predictions. I had the Packers and the Bills, not so great for me, but let's see how everyone else's predictions fared. All right, Bobby, after your big picks the other day, you picked Alabama to win, you got it right. Yeah. Uh, who do you got winning the AFC Championship, uh, Bills versus Chiefs? Well, my home got knocked in the head Sunday. He's dazed in a little bit, but I don't think they can stop him. I think it'd be Kansas City. And then you got Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, two superstars, fist and retired, they're fighting for the ring. So I believe it'd be, let me flip, Aaron Rodgers. All right, so uh, who do you got winning these games this weekend? Uh, Bills, Chiefs, or Packers, Bucks? Well, I think the Packers are going to win. Aaron Rodgers has been playing good. And I think they'll get a pretty easy win. And then Bills Chiefs, I got the Bills. Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs have been playing well, and I think they can pull out a win. All right, we've got some big championship games this week. Uh, who you got in the AFC? Yeah. In the AFC championship game, I, I don't really like Kansas City. I know everybody loves them, and they won it all, I think, last year, and they've got Mahomes and everything. But I'm going to go with the Bills. I'm just going to go with the upset. I think the Bills win this one in a tight one. Uh, they're going to hold the Chiefs down. It's going to be Bills 20. Kansas City 18. All right, the second championship game, the NFC, who you got in that one? Well, this is kind of where uh, I, I, I'm an NFC fan. I like the NFC the best, but obviously being a Falcons fan. You got the uh, Buccaneers taking on Green Bay. I couldn't care less for either. I hate both of those teams with a passion. Uh, but the NFL sometimes is kind of rigged, and Tom Brady's on Tampa Bay, and no team's ever hosted a Super Bowl in their home city. So this will be the time it happens for Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay wins this one. I think it's going to be higher scoring than a lot of people think. I'm going to go Tampa Bay 45, Green Bay 41. All right, so you actually got one of the picks right and one of them wrong. Uh, yep. What are your thoughts about the game? Well, I'm telling you, man, I was all far enough for Green Bay going in there and taking care of business, playing at home. I mean, you know, you're playing at home, and then – I didn't really pay attention to uh, to uh, the quarterback, but uh, he's not running. I mean, he had two touchdowns, but that's beside the point. Tears is over and, and everything's done. But I will say that Kansas City looks pretty good. I picked them, so I'm pulling for Kansas City to win it all. All right, man. Actually, bro. You got both picks wrong this week. Uh, what, did you, what were your thoughts about the game? Well, I thought the Packers could have played better, you know. Uh, Tom Brady threw three interceptions, and I think they could have capitalized, and that really hurt them in the end. And then the Bills Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes did play, and he just showed out. He played really good, and they won, so. All right, so you actually uh, got one of them right and one of them wrong. Uh, what were your thoughts about the game? Well, uh, yeah, I went one for two. I, you know, again, uh, I, I didn't do a good job on the, uh, the Chiefs-Bills game. I was really picking that one with my heart. Uh, I was going for the underdog, and Kansas City was a little bit too much for Buffalo. And that's all right, because I could care less who won that game anyway. Uh, as for the other one, I, I don't like Rodgers. I don't really like Brady. But I think my prediction kind of held true. I don't think I picked the score close to being right. Actually, it was a pretty tight game. It wasn't as high scoring as I picked it. So you'll have the Chiefs and the uh, – 
Bucks in the playoff or in the Super Bowl, everybody, all the bandwagons can rejoice. All the bandwagons will be happy. They get to watch Mahomes take on Brady. And I'll go ahead and say this right now. It's going to be Brady, y'all. I mean, it's, it's, it might as well have already been played. They're going to let him win it. They've let him win about 15 games this year. Wow, that sure was a lot for sports, but let's move you back into the news now. And we sure did save the best for last. We have another segment of Ben Don't Ask Me by the great Ben Dineski. And I hear this week's question is musical related. And if you know Ben, he is great at music. I don't want to give it away, so let's send it over to Ben Dineski. And with the help of his partner, Brandon Frady, we have Ben Don't Ask Me. Hello, my name is Benjamin Dineski, and welcome to this third installment of Ben Don't Ask Me. Today, our question comes from Emma McNeese. Uh, how do you tune a tuba? Well, don't ask me. Well, actually, come to think of it, this one you can ask me. Let's go to one of the band practice rooms, and I'll show you. Today, I'm going to show you how to tune a tuba. So first, you want to have the right pitch. You want to hit the right note. So the first note you should always hit whenever you're tuning is a high B-flat. That was bad, but you know, we're going to go with it. So a high B flat is the tuba tuning note because this is a concert pitch instrument. So you always want to hit a high B flat because that's every single brass tuning note. And we also, whenever we're tuning with the whole entire band, the main tuning note is an F. So that tunes the entire band. And uh, you basically just want to make sure that you're not too sharp or too flat whenever you're tuning. You need to listen and have perfect tone. So, if I'm tuning right now, see I'm a little flat. So in that case, I would pull this out, pull this slide out, this is the main tuning slide, pull this and push it out. And then that would make me more sharp. So now I'm in tune. And so you would do that for every single one of your valve combinations. Especially the fourth valve. Fourth valve never stays in tune. And so, yeah, that's how you tune a tuba. Thank you for that, Ben. But that will sadly wrap up this Tuesday edition of the Five Star News. Our Cohort A crew will be back next Tuesday, and our Cohort B crew will join you with a brand new edition Friday. But until then, stay classy, Heritage. <laughs>